Welcome to part two of creating a coffee corner. In part one, we created the shapes, the initial colors of the, of the objects. And in this one, we'll be refining it a bit more, adding a bit more detail in the windows as well to create more of a reflection look or maybe a stylized reflection look. And we'll be setting up the scene a bit more as well to create a nicer render. So let's get into it. So I don't think the windows look that great yet. So what I'm gonna do is a little, a little bit of a trick, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of my glass faces, which is the window. You can select all of these by going to edit mode, selecting your window material and hit select. And then we can crank up a new window on the top right there, direct it to the left, UV editor, and let's press U and unwrap everything, right? And this way we're basically telling Blender where we want our faces to be, well, link to in 2D space for texturing, right? And that is quite nice because now we can actually add some reflections perhaps, right? So let's go to a shader editor, let's go to render view and let's hit shift A and find a gradient texture. Now let's see how that looks by default, right? So by default it's gonna be grading um, according to a generated coordinates setup. So we can just drag this out um, or hit control T and if Ctrl T doesn't work, make sure you go to Edit in Blender at the top there, Edit, Preferences, and then go to your Add-ons and search for Node Wrangler, and then just turn that on and click it away, right? And then you can Ctrl T and this will work beautifully. And we can set this to be UV perhaps, right? And then every window is going to have a little bit of a own um, gradient space, which is beautiful, right? And then we can try some rotation values. Um, I always have to find out which one works best. So this one, set it to 45. So we're actually gonna have a grading in the diagonal direction of a window. And then we can hit Ctrl A and find a color ramp. And we can just set this to be constant. There we go, and drag this to be closer. All right, something like that. Beautiful. Now the door is gonna be a little bit, a little bit different, but it doesn't really matter. What we can do as well is just create a new UV for the door, for example, All right? So what we can do, is select the door only, and then in the UV we can select, for example, this, bring it to a place where we actually get a diagonal kind of look, something like that. You know, it doesn't really matter. Let's say, uh, maybe this one should be totally black, something like that. Looks quite interesting, I'd say. Then in the shader editor, we can just connect that to be our base color and connect the BSDF again to your surface, right? And then just crank the alpha up because now we're gonna work with fake glass, or sorry, fake, fake materials anyway. So this is now all reflecting our environment pretty much. So let's crank up the roughness just a slight bit so it is not fully reflecting everything as harsh. There we go. And now we can change this black to be, for example, the blue color, the light blue, but a little bit darker, something like, something like this. And then we can select this one and make this lighter blue, right? So it's almost going, almost going to be the same color, but not quite. So let's just color pick this color, actually. There we go. And just crank up the value slightly. Like that, right? Create some fake reflections. Now, I feel like this door is not completely right yet. So the reflection is in the wrong direction. So what we can do is just flip this by pressing SX minus 1. There we go. And then we can just move this to be in a similar direction. Right, let's do something like something like this. And I'm gonna select this piece to SX minus one and just crank it there. You know, something like that looks quite decent to me. Amazing, some fake reflections, isn't that easy? Right, and what we can do as well is go to the shader editor, right? And now that we're creating materials and shaders, we can just do whatever we want. We can hit plus sign and just move that middle one to the right a little bit. Something like this, create some streaks perhaps. Hit plus and make this even lighter. All right, and we can actually just crank up some cool reflections. Beautiful, All right? And perhaps move that out a little bit more like that. So that already looks quite decent, I'd say. And we could even, nah, nah, let's creep it at that. It looks quite cool. So I'm gonna go to my environment, my world properties, and I'm not really satisfied with the world right now. So I'm just gonna rotate that for a sec to see if we can get some nicer shadows. Right, something like this already looks way better. 
Now for my front there, the white and the primary uh, colors, I'm going to crank up the roughness a little bit to like 0.8. This one as well, 0.8, beautiful. And for my cube itself, I want this to be quite rough too, something like that. Right, and then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of a bevel modifier to my cube, my original um, model there, right? We're getting a little bit of an edge here and just set the segments to be three, for example, and then right mouse and shade smooth by angle again, right? And this just makes sure that our edges are actually catching a little bit of light here and it doesn't look as bad, right? And then we can set our geometry from, uh, um, I think, the inner one to arc. No, then it's going to be the outer one to arc. There we go. So it's going to be a little bit more angled, nicer, right? Beautiful. And make sure that in the shading, we hit hardened normals, right? So you can see right now we get this little weird shading line. So make sure to select hardened normals and it will fix that quite nicely. Beautiful. We can do the same for, for example, this one, right? So we can select that, hit shift and select our box, our cube, control L and copy modifiers. There we go. Now this one is a little bit stronger. So we can just crank that down to be like 0.012. And then for this one, same thing, Ctrl L, copy modifiers, and there we go. Right mouse, shade smooth by angle. Beautiful. So you can see that just adding those little bits of roundness adds a lot of beautiful stuff, right? So this one as well, um, just same modifier, right? Copy modifiers, we get a little bit of a bevel. This one can be a little bit bigger, perhaps, right? Something like that. Beautiful. Amazing, right? And add a little solidify modifier to this one as well, I'd say. Solidify to just add some thickness to the inner parts there. Perhaps a bit more. Something like that. So just to add a slight bit of thickness. Right, that looks really, really good. All right, so I'm just going to set up my scene now and just render this out because it already looks quite cute. So for our ground material, I just want something that is more in the same color theme. Right, so let's set this to be more rough as well. Or just have a small reflection, perhaps. And let's crank the color to be... Hmm, this is always a little bit difficult. I think blue would look cool because we've got a blue reflection in the window as well. And it usually means... Well, it matches because it would be... Um, it would be understood that blue is actually the color that is reflected there. So the ground will be blue too. Right now to render this out, I'm going to use a little product design tip, I guess, and um, is how to render objects beautifully without like having a background that is looking weird. Right. So if we set up a camera to be, for example, right here, control shift or no control alt at zero, we are going to move our camera right here. Let's zoom out a little bit like that. Frame our corner, our coffee corner beautifully. And we can press R and x double x and then move that up a little bit like that and then press g and middle mouse there we go now rotate your uh, ground plane to be perpendicular to your camera view and that means that i want this edge of that plane to be the same or parallel to this not perpendicular parallel right and that is the case right now and then we can go into edit mode and extrude that back face ez and then we can bevel this back edge beautifully like that. And then hit the right mouse and shade smooth by angle. Ctrl B, draw a little box around your, your coffee corner. And there we go. Right. Then I'm going to select my object. Um, the background go to my object's um, properties, go to visibility. And I'm going to disable shadow just because I don't want shadow in it. Right. There we go. Oh, I don't want it to catch sunlight and cast a shadow is what I meant. And then in our environment properties, we can still play around with the sun elevation, for example, if we want this to be more daylight. And then we can rotate our sun as well to be more of like a front, um, a front angled light source like that. And then we can change the sun size to be a little bit bigger because I don't want shadows that are this sharp. I want them to be more soft. So I'm going to just increase my sun size to be something like that. Right, that's already looking beautiful. And now we can change our uh, exposure to be exactly what we're looking for. Something like that. All right, I think that is quite interesting. Now I'm going to change the roughness of 
my grounds. Let's see, do I want a reflection or do I not want a reflection? As always, the question, perhaps a little bit. And I think this will look even better if I add another ground object, right? So I'm just gonna do that Shift A mesh plane, scale this up a tiny bit, press Tab A and extrude this up a little bit. There we go. Beautiful, and then we can select everything else, right? So our cube objects and just move that up slightly to be on top of that little plane. Beautiful. And then, for example, we can round all of these corners. So select all of your side edges. So that small one there, our front one there, that one there at the sides, and then our back one. You can press Alt Z to go into X ring. Just select that. And then go back to camera view and press Ctrl B and just bevel this so it's nice and round, I'd say. Right mouse, shades move by angle and add a little bevel modifier, right? And just change this to be a little bit less. There we go. And segments three. Beautiful. The last thing I'm going to do is move my coffee corner sign up a little bit. So it's overlapping slightly. So there we go. That's looking quite beautiful, I'd say. Now go to your render properties and just enable denoise that will always add that little extra softness as well to your viewport so you can see exactly how it looks and i think that looks like quite an interesting coffee corner that we made very very quickly all right um so what we can do actually is just select this object right and press shift d and r z 90 and there we go and shift d r z 180 you don't see that one that much, but I think that looks quite nice. The last quick little thing is that I saw some weird shading going on. Um, and to fix that, just switch the solidify and bevel modifiers on our little curtain piece and you'll be good to go, right? There we go. All right, that was the tutorial for the coffee corner. We got a nice colorful results of a cute little coffee corner. I hope you learned something and hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, please leave a like, a subscribe or leave a comment. We would enjoy any one of those and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.